Thank you very much for your introduction. So everybody, please do not sleep. Okay? <laughs> I'm a Chinese from Sweden. Now he's working together with Professor Martin Celebi and Professor Yong Ogren. So today my topic is about magnetism. Okay? This logo which I created last year in beautiful Jeju Island. And then today I don't expect all of you to remember the last presentation in Jeju Island. However, you should pay attention again to this FCC iron nickel. So, we did recalculation according to this experimental curie temperature for FCC iron nickel, and then we predict a red T0 curve like this. So you see, the T0 line will not support with MS temperature. However, if you do calculation from database, then you will get a ridiculous cross. Okay. For this uh, diffusion part, everybody, I think you understand that if you do this diffusivity calculation, if you find this uh, diffusivity slope, then it will be different in the paramagnetic states and paramagnetic states. This is a uh, well-known in Kraft community, I guess. <coughs> okay. Einstein has a word, so. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simple. Okay. Here today, I want to say that we have some problem because we are having a simple HIHJ model in the Hilliard model. However, we are now using a simpler model. Okay. Firstly, I need to introduce the original in the model proposed in Kaffer conference in 1976. So you can see from this expression for CT, you can get this red curve for magnetic CT. However, when you try to implant this magnetic model in the conventional software and try to fit experimental data, then here in VR found that if you write the equation like this, then you can easily get the curve like this one and is sufficiently useful to describe the heat capacity from magnetic. Okay, they have a second concept which called max maximum magnetic entropy. So you don't need to understand the quantum mechanics. However, I do remind you that the only input for this calculation of magnetic entropy, you need to get this input for local spin magnetic moment. Okay, remember this. Then, if we have these two concepts, you can simply put equation here, put some expression for CT and magnetic entropy, then you get this expression for magnetic energy. Okay, so finally, you will get this kind of equation, we call it IHJ model. Everybody should know this if you do cost modeling, of course. However, I do remind you again that there is three parameters which is very important. So the first one is structure factor, which determine the shape of magnetic CP. If you have one magnetic number, of course, it will dominate the intensity of the CP. Of course, for TC, it will choose the position of this CP spike. Okay. So, in the original model written by Hilliard, of course, also in this paper, then they suggest, if you cannot find a local spin magnetic moment, then you could probably choose this expression, which has input as average or mean magnetic moment, to calculate the magnetic entropy. So, there are some difference between these equations. If we check with this PCC iron nickel case, okay, you see, if you ask a initial experts to calculate the local magnetic moment, then you will have these two lines, iron and nickel atoms. Of course, then you can put this into this blue ones and get the magnetic entropy for these cross symbols. Okay, suppose if you cannot find any information for local magnetic moment, then you can have this kind of input as average magnetic moment. Then you will get this red symbol here corresponds to the magnetic entropy. But of course, this is not the exact solution for entropy power. Okay, so today I should introduce one name called effective magnetic 
moment. It's very simple. If you have this exact value for magnetic entropy, so you just recalculate for this beta and have the same form as this red one, okay? So, if you compare the effective magnetic moment, then you can see the difference. So far, so good. I just want to tell you that the local magnetic moment will be equal to the effective magnetic moment. And if you have average magnetic moment, then you could probably consider as an approximation. Okay. If you check the original publication from Indian here and Yard, you will find they never try to discuss anti magnetism. So, you ask yourself that we need something in this model? Yes or not? Of course. Then, you will see what did we do in the last 30 years using this single IHJ model? It's not so funny. Okay. We did some simplification. The first simplification is that we stick onto this average magnetic moment, but never try to calculate effective magnetic moment or use local magnetic moment. This is wrong, of course. Why? I already explained to you with PCC identical case, okay? These two values are almost together, equally the same. Okay, this is for the ferromagnetic states. However, if you want to describe the antiferromagnetic, then ideally spin configuration will be like this, okay? Spin up and spin down. They run parallel. So, for this case, you will never have chance to have average magnetic moment equal to effective magnetic moment. Okay, why? Because the average one corresponds to the global magnetization. However, the local or effective one corresponds to the local magnetization. If you cannot understand well, then I should show you this case. So, we are now like a initial person goes right and Carhartt goes left. So you say that since they go the same, uh, they go the different direction and parallel, so there is no entropy in here. So this is a little bit absurd, right? Okay, if you start a case which is quite similar as SCC iron nickel, then you will see, if you check, the magnetic phase diagram will be like this. For A elements, it shows any ferromagnetic. For B elements, it has ferromagnetic. Then, if you get average magnetic moment, it will be showing a shape like this. For ferromagnetic, of course, it has some quantity. However, for any ferromagnetic, you don't have any value for it. Only zero. Okay, if you try to get effective magnetic moment, then it's totally different case. It has no possibility to reach zero. So the right one is the right one. Okay. The second simplification, also very simple. We use a single radish kisser polynomial try to describe this whole transition from antiferromagnetic to ferromagnetic. So, what's the case? We, we introduce such a so-called white factor. Of course, I, 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 don't, I don't agree that Richard Wise really uh, wished to name this white factor, use his name. Okay, so let's This is antiferromagnetic, and this is Curie temperature. We first fit this red curve, and simply assume white factor for SCC or HCP structure as minus 3, so you recalculate the real near temperature upwards. Okay, no problem. If you have near temperature for the BCC structure, of course, you get white factor as minus 1. This is also okay. However, if you have non-magnetic for A elements, you have magnetic in the B element, then you would get this shape first, and then in the A part, you will introduce magnetic. So, single radish kister does not work. Then, if you have this case, 
for any firm and lending, you have this part. Firm and lending, you have this part. Okay, no problem. However, if you find the experimental data for near temperature, then you have no chance to feed this experimental data. Okay? If we have such experimental results like this, then you will only feed the curve for near temperature here, but not here. We have a lot of chances to bring artifacts. So far as we know, that there is no physical meaning to introduce such kind of white factor. And of course, it's just a mathematical fitting for it. So, it's a pity that we are using a simple one. The basic idea for this kind of revised magnetic model is really simple. Okay, but not too simple. So, we introduce both antiferromagnetic and ferromagnetic states into each phase, and then we try to describe these two different magnetic states separately using two reddish kister uh, ki uh, kis polynomials. Okay, here, using a simple model, no problem, you can describe this case. Now, you still can describe this case using our revised model. However, we will introduce such kind of hypothetical near temperature to A elements and B elements. Don't introduce any interaction parameter, so it's just a linear combination here. Then, you can fit the experimental data for the curing temperature like this. And here, if you cannot describe, then we have two different functions fitting the experimental data like this, using reddish Kister polynomial. Okay, if you have this kind of strange shape, which shows non-magnetic in between, then you can fit the data like this. Okay? If you have non-magnetism for A elements, of course, we can use this kind of fitting as here. So, people will ask, what did you do for the magnetic energy? It's also very simple. Since we introduce such a kind of hypothetical case for the negative absolute temperature, then we simply assume that when temperature goes to be negative, there is no contribution from magnetic. Okay? So, copper person always consider multi component case. Then I simply show these two these two artificial Henry system. Okay, if you have curing temperature for three elements, then you simply fit the experimental data like here. However, if you have a little bit complicated case like this, A elements have curing temperature and B C has near temperature, then you can fit the data here like this. If you still do not believe me, then I should show you a case for Kronian ecosystem, which is very simple but very complex. Simple because now you can close your eye and draw a picture for Kronian echo phase diagram only four faces. The difficult part is for magnetic. Okay? So, for BCC Kronian echo, then you will only have one chance to find two experimental dots here showing the near temperature for pure chromium. However, since BCC echo is unstable, then you would just fit in using the simple model like this here. We calculate three different temperatures for the magnetic energy, then you will get curves like this. 500 Kelvin, 400 Kelvin, and 200 Kelvin. Okay. So, now we have a lot of ab initial experts here. We ask our ab initial experts at KDH to calculate for the net for each side. So, you will get a fitting should be follow this dot line here. Because, in between, you will find non-magnetic. If you use the old, simpler magnetic model, you have no chance to fit this case. Then, you will find that if you want to try to recalculate the same three temperature, you will have, you will have magnetic energy showing like this. Okay? So, I append 
these two calculations together, you will see the difference for the magnetic energy. Now we should ask ourselves about one question. How about the accuracy of the database that we have if we disregard the magnetic contributions? Okay, so what about robust magnetic model? I didn't say anything, but now I just want to say that we have some challenges and pitfalls. First one, we should have long-term sight. So then, since we have a lot of people sitting here, you are doing lattice stability down to zero Kelvin. Please do some research work for these fewer elements. If possible, do some research work for the intermagnetics and oxides, okay? Now you see, for iron chromium system, you have sigma phase showing magnetism. And, of course, if you want to describe more, then probably you also need to consider the pressure dependence of magnetization. Here, my conclusion is very simple. We should stop doing something far beyond the truth. And then, we should organize some discussion more about magnetic model. Here is the logo for the last year, and now today I have a Brazilian color showing that we have such kind of new concept about low temperature cover. There is four different directions for this. So, for this two, a initial and experiments is well known. However, if you do some lattice stability, then please do regard this magnetic model. So, here, since this work is done in Hiroam Center, and of course, these are the four authors, we have close contact with Professor Mathilde and Professor Inden. Very interestingly, if you ask each person contribute one or two letters from their last name, then you will get magnetic. 